And now we will have Mike Dingledine with an update on the middle school construction. Hey, thanks everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. All right. So we're going to do a brief update on the middle school construction progress. Uh, I'm going to hit all the projects that are in progress right now, but obviously spend the most time on the new middle schools. We're under construction now with everything. So uh, it, that's pretty exciting. Um, just want to touch uh, the East Franklin project. This is our last effort to go into that project. We have just finalized um, the furniture bids for all new furniture to be installed this summer. Uh, and so we're working uh, with the furniture supplier now to uh, provide um, delivery dates and installation dates for all of that. But again, it'll be over the summer this year. Uh, but the entire building gets new furniture. Uh, the one piece that we backed off of was cafeteria tables because they were purchased in the last few years. So everything else you'll see uh, throughout the building, all the blue you see on this drawing uh, will be new furniture, um, including uh, the two uh, portable classrooms as well. So it'll be a, a brand new school finally, uh, piece by piece, but uh, still a fantastic uh, save from the standpoint of uh, creating uh, something from what the state would have considered nothing. And I think it's really, really cool. In fact, this is a, a OSBA lecture at some point in the future about how to save an old school and repurpose it. Um, our furniture standards are exactly the same as we use for the 15 elementaries. Um, so this is going to be just one more, uh, the same furniture choices, the same diversity, the same specialty items that you see in the, um, in the elementary schools you will see in East Franklin. Uh, so I'm, I'm matching Mr. Caldwell's background right now. <laughs> uh, Jackson Middle School. It's a very comfortable space, I can just tell. <laughs> Uh, Jackson Middle School, we just got bids. Um, we had really good participation, 11 bidders. Uh, and as you would expect, with that much participation, we were under budget. Um, and so we're, we're feeling good about moving this project forward. Uh, we had some little additional space to meet all the requirements of the School Facilities Commission. You can see the classroom addition and wireframe on the right and on the, I mean, on the left. And on the right is the multipurpose addition to the, uh, the gymnasium. And then you can see that we've created some additional seating up in a gymnasium for additional capacity to bring that above student capacity. So we're excited about getting everything we were looking to get and get it done. Um, everything is going to match material wise to the existing Jackson. Um, we have so, so pretty good sizable addition to the south here uh, for the classrooms um, and then the south view of it. Uh, we're putting a new covered walkway from the bus drop off into the school uh, as part of this addition. And so we're feeling uh, good about that being on, on budget, on task, on time. Uh, the four new middle schools, we're about uh, six months past our end of design. And so it's uh, looking back at it, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting that everything we've talked about and done, we've confirmed more and, and again with, with folks in the district. And in fact, last week we had furniture meetings with all the departments at the middle school level uh, for all the new furniture that'll be coming uh, toward the end of this year. A couple images of our overall design. Again, this is um, Pleasant View uh, south of Bolton Crossing as our example, but you can see uh, everything that we went out for bid with is pretty much bought out. We have a handful of packages left to buy out, but it looks like, again, we're going to be substantially under our GMP, not substantially under our budget, unfortunately, but certainly below uh, where the GMPs were at mid-year. And again, that I think the explanation for that is we're getting lots of interest and lots of participation. And so high participation use usually means more competitive bids. And that is certainly what we're seeing um, as we look through these. Uh, looking back at some of the things six months later, I think uh, we were pushed by the staff to be more innovative than I expected. Usually you pull the staff along as an architect, but here the staff was very comfortable telling us what they thought new middle schools should look like. And we, we've, been, we've done some things that I think are very innovative uh, especially some large and small extended learning areas beyond this traditional classroom uh, that we have. This is that large 100 seat sort of lecture room, 
professional development room, uh, whatever we can think of it. And again, the furniture choices and design decisions we made were very much driven by staff. These are the smaller, but not too small, of these breakout rooms in between classrooms. There's eight of these in each of the middle schools, uh, and they can hold you know, eight to 10 to 12 students uh, in a breakout situation outside of the classroom. And again, they're, they're embedded in the classroom wing. They're very close, they're very supervisable, but they are unique spaces. And then we have a, here a picture of kind of the main stairs you come up, the art display on the left, the media center on the right, uh, very big open hallways. Again, uh, I think the one takeaway we, uh, we learned from Jackson was to make sure the, the throughput, the flow size of the hallways and things were, were adequate. And so this, we bumped that up a bit and you can see that as you look through. Media center, very much like the public library, the breakout rooms in there as well. Um, and so there are you know, eight, six person breakout rooms, there are eight to 12 person breakout rooms, and then there's a hundred person breakout room in each of these middle schools that aren't traditional classrooms. Uh, and we like that innovation. So um, settled with color, settled with uh, some design issues at the end. And again, we, we are on track to continue and go ahead with our auxiliary gyms, which is another really innovative thing for a middle school to have an auxiliary gym. We're under construction on all four sites. The two blue sites are summit construction. The two red sites are resilient construction. Each of these folks has a, a, a tight infill bid build and they each of them have a greenfill build. So uh, it's interesting to watch how they're progressing. And I will say they have cooperated immensely to share what they've learned and what they're doing and how they're doing it from each other. Uh, and it's, it feels like even with three different construction entities in our project, uh, we have one team. Uh, and that's a really big takeaway, I think, for what we did and how we did it. Uh, this is a Norton site. It's our Titus site, uh, and we are building uh, right between an active uh, Prairie Norton and an active Norton Middle School, uh, but we're doing it very well. Uh, this is our sample tilt-up panel for our gym wing, where we have the precast panels here made here locally in Grove City. Pretty excited about that being part of this project. Uh, in the past week, these were taken Monday a week ago, uh, we've made a huge progress on slabs. We had all the underground uh, footings done. We have all the underground utilities done. We're starting with some masonry walls with the mason, but the general trades contractor was able to get started on slab work at all the sites. And I would say that the CMs are focusing on Norton and Finland with a little bit of extra uh, focus because they are the ones that have to be finished in time to make the transition uh, with, the, with the demolition of the two existing middle schools. Uh, and so real, real good work going on, really interesting, uh, bringing a huge pumper truck in for slabs. Usually that's just sort of dumped out of the back of a, uh, a concrete truck, but they're doing it with uh, some more expensive equipment to get better quality and to get better time frames. And so uh, when they show up in the morning, they end up you know, pouring uh, 20, 30% of the slab for the whole building in a day. Here's some of the areas the slab hasn't caught up with yet. These are some of the internal hallway connections between the classroom wing and the administration wing. You can see the complexity of the foundations and footings, uh, lots of steel going up, lots of electric going up um, out of the ground. And again, you can see how close we are uh, in proximity to the other buildings. This is the main hallway from looking from the classroom wing down toward the gym wing. Uh, again, this is the, the center of the building, so to speak, and, and we're just barely north of the exi existing Norton. Here's that same image, basically looking at the computer model mm -hmm. instead of the site. Uh, we have temporary uh, lakes, <laughs> temporary uh, water control on all the sites. Uh, we have stockpiling of, of topsoil on all the sites. And again, the tight sites have required that we do the retention instead of detention because we don't have a lot of area to retain water. But these are temporary and they're planned to go away when we're done. With the exception uh, of um, Pleasant View, there is a permanent retention pond there, which I'll show you. We have very clean, very organized sites, good lay down spaces, and everything, everything is fenced off from school operations, uh, be it the neighbors um, around all these sites. This is Finland. Uh, this is the Rosili project of the infill. Again, we have three schools around here that we're operating within. Um, they've got everything laid out well. They're about in the same exact position as Norton is. These are the footing um, reinforcement cages that they pre-made and had shipped to the site. Uh, they've laid them all out in order and in the right place on paved surface. And so they've got everything very well organized. And so things are going very quickly. From the time I was there taking a picture like this by the afternoon, uh, they were putting the plastic down to pour the slabs. So they're making very, very good progress. They're keeping the sites very organized. Again, you can see our proximity to neighbors uh, is pretty tight. 
um, but also other schools. This is the center core of the school again, where the elevator uh, and classroom wing and administration wing kind of join. Um, here looking south in the main hallway, you can see Finland Elementary. Uh, looking to the west, you can see Franklin Woods Intermediate. Uh, and looking to the east, you can see the existing Finland. That will be where our new football stadium will end up when we're done. Pleasant View is a greenfield site, much more space, um, much easier to operate, but we also have more to control. We have more dirt disturbed. We have more water and storm runoff. So the first thing that Summit did was create uh, really, really nice storm control and water control around the perimeter of the entire site. There's additional construction going on around us, uh, but we don't want to be pu pushing uh, dirty water or anything back and forth on the sites. And they've created this really nice uh, area where they control all the runoff to the south of the site. In looking north, you can see Fulton Crossing. This is again, the center of the building pretty much, well, maybe closer to the gym. Um, this is the mat of a slab reinforcing. Again, they're going through a pile of this kind of reinforcing a day um, because they're pouring uh, so many square feet of slab as we go through. Uh, this is the main hallway at, at Pleasant View. This is the electric room. All that underground electric is distributed throughout the entire site. It's underground through the entire building. Um, and the electricians uh, have it all popped up where it needs to be so they can pour the slabs um, and it all, it all returns to this very dense location. Interesting thing over here I noticed this afternoon looking at this, there's a little house of plastic where they kept the block warm. So on the cold days that we had a few weeks ago, they were able to use block that was the right temperature to uh, work well with the, with the mortar. So they're being very careful with the weather and taking advantage of, of time. This is our generator yard where our generator and our chillers will be. Again, those are full height walls around it, so they won't be visible and they won't be very noisy from the standpoint of neighbors and the school itself. They'll be enclosed. See some of the residential construction south of, of this school. Uh, a little break in the wall where we can see the proximity to Bolton. Uh, across the street view of Holt Crossing. And now we are at Brook Park, the, the biggest site and the most interesting site and in fact, um, one of the sites I was most concerned about because of runoff, we have lots of residential neighbors. We have lots of new construction to the north of us in Beulah Park. Um, and one of our first efforts at this site was a 200 foot box culvert uh, that spans the area that accesses the football field. The most important thing is not to see this muddy and, and full of uh, set, settle, settlement, sediment, sorry, that's the word, sediment. And as you can see it close up, the water is crystal clear. This is a huge, a huge yes thumbs up for Rosilic, making sure that the filtration and the riprap and the installation of the underground drainage was done at the right time and with the right protection. And you can see here, um, it's, it's just crystal clear water running through this. And this is a blue line stream. This is you know controlled um, by USGS. And so it's something that we have to be very, very careful that we're doing right and they have. And it goes 200 feet across, the, across this site and allows us to access our football field, which is there um, really surprising how open we are now to Grove City Road and how prominent this building will be. It kind of felt like it was going to be a building inside a, a, a very unique site, but now it's going to have a very, really huge open southern exposure, uh, which I think will be impressive as you drive out Grove City Road. Here are these footers are going in place. Big elevator putting here slabs being poured. Again, they weren't, they hadn't started when I got there. By the time I left, they were, they were pouring concrete. So they are really on it underground uh, utilities getting put in right ahead of the, the, the slab work. This is the masonry reinforcing, all of it's on site. The masonry is on site. It, again, it's being temperature controlled uh, and they're able to you know, put up as much masonry as the mason crew can do in a day. This is a really impressive effort. Um, there's a huge uh, protection fence and around this tree um, and it's all the way out to the drip line of the tree. It's not just around the trunk of the tree. Um, this is uh, a huge, I think, save in terms of the sort of character of this site to have this uh, at least 120, 130 year old tree uh, stay as part of this new school site. And I know Grove City asked us to be very careful with it, um, and Rosilli has done a great job of protecting it. Another thing I'm impressed about, they put down the base paving everywhere. That's another reason why I think the drainage is working so well. It's contractors are parking where they're supposed to be. There's places where architects can park and not get full of mud. Um, and the runoff is amazing. This is a permanent retention basin um, that's in the corner of the site. And because of our blue line stream, we had to, we had to do something as, as deep as retention, but it's already green and crystal clear. 
um, and we're already controlling the quality and the quantity of the runoff at the site. So again, our neighbors that you see very close to us on all sides, uh, they're being treated very well by the extra work that was done to make this, um, to make this appropriate early in the project. And then as you can see, the Beulah Park residential construction is encroaching right down to us. So it's coming up about the time this school is finished, we're gonna see some serious, serious development um, in that area around the old racetrack, uh, which is impressive. And then this is looking from Grove City Road and you can see how wide open the site's gonna be. Where you see the yellow trucks, that's gonna be the building. And here's the box culvert, that's the top end of the football field. And, and in our foreground here will be uh, the field and the track. Um, and and the rest of that outdoor site development. Uh, so really impressive view, I think, that I didn't expect, um, not knowing how much demolition might take place at the south end of the site. Our last effort was all last week, we met with the departments and talked about furniture. Uh, again, we showed them lots of examples of what's being done, but they actually pushed us to be innovative and they, um, they understood things about budget and choices between the highest end and the economical end, and we made a lot of good choices. And again, we haven't finalized our furniture decisions, but we got to show all the staff, all the pieces and parts that make up the furniture for a new building. That includes the new furniture at Jackson as well. Uh, again, classroom furniture is pretty much following where we've been at the high school level at Franklin Heights, uh, but all these small group rooms and teacher prep rooms and large rooms, they're actually looking at very different furniture. Um, and so conference type of furniture, some soft seating, um, some adjustable furniture, these really cool whiteboards that, that roll around and actually divide the room up in different sections. Uh, and again, we're very pleased at the innovation push that the teachers have given us. And then the media center can be lots of this kind of furniture as well, uh, where we're looking at areas where uh, kids can be more comfortable working on their Chromebooks or reading uh, in, our, in our media center space. So that's an update. It takes us from probably last fall to this spring. Um, again, everything's working well, it's on time. Um, and I'm very pleased with the construction operations, especially the three entities working together so well. When I was out there, I saw people from Summit on Rosilli's site and I saw uh, the folks from uh, Gilbane on both sites. Uh, and so they're working together very well and making some really good decisions about what, what and how they're doing it. So any questions I can certainly answer. I'll highlight a couple things uh, while you think through the questions. Uh, as Mike said, uh, bid day savings aren't all the way in yet, but what numbers look good for bid day savings. We also have contingency dollars in the project that we build in, as well as aid to construction. And so we're pretty comfortable. Um, as you move further and along and get out of the dirt, so, so to say, your chance of unforeseen start to diminish significantly. And so we've been very blessed with very minimal issues as far as compaction rates and, and a variety of things there. So we're, we're pleased and we're comfortable with where the project's at. The next big push um, is to make sure that we're essentially fully enclosed before winter hits. And then that'll, that'll give them approximately eight months to do the inside. I don't know if you wanna elaborate, that, but that's no, pretty right. much where we're at. Right. And they've made decisions to make sure that happens. Any questions for Mr. Dingelbein? Um, I was just going to say incredibly impressive work. And um, it's, it's a true joy to just drive around and see the speed that everything is, is going. And it's, it's just beautifully done, top to bottom, every detail just seems so well thought out. So thank you so much. Yeah, and very much a team effort. There's so many people in the district who are instrumental in making things happen. And again, the, the entities that are all working together are our consultants and the, and the construction folks. It, it's just really a, a team effort. And it's, you know, like we've been here before and, it, and it's obviously shows. <laughs> okay. Seeing no other comments. Thank you, Mike. I always enjoy listening to your updates. Thank you.